Hello and welcome to today's meditation. I'm Shabal Raish, uh, Director at Perusia, and I'm privileged to be able to bring to you the meditation on Joshua. Uh, I am the author of the book, How Islam Led Me Back to Christ, and it was during my conversion, you know, I really uh, was on a journey looking for who God was. Uh, and obviously in Islam, they worship Allah, and the concept of who Allah is very different to the concept of who God the Father is. Although we think it's the same God, and yes, we, we believe that God is the creator, it was very different. And so um, I was in conflict to, to understand which God do I follow. And it wasn't until Christ himself spoke to me uh, you know, in my conscience, in my heart, to say, are you going to give up all that I've done for you? And that's what I think Joshua teaches us. So um, I invite you to read that if you can um, and learn about my journey. But you know, it, it's no different. All of our journeys, when you look at salvation history, very similar. What is the Bible? And, and this journey from, from Eden to Bethlehem, what's it teaching us? It's not a bunch of stories written thousands of years ago for the people of that time. These are stories that are teaching us today. And so I feel a, a close link with Joshua. And who was Joshua? He was basically a student of Moses. Now you would have, the previous uh, meditation was on Moses and, and thanks to Deacon Peter Pelican, uh, who did a great job there unpacking who Moses was and what he did. And what I want to talk about now, Joshua, he's the bridge if you like. Joshua is the bridge from time before the promised land and he obviously existed then and then entering into the promised land. And so the first, uh, the Pentateuch if you like, or the first uh, books, uh, five books of the Bible, uh, all leading up to the Promised Land, and Joshua in the book of Judges, um, in the book of the Numbers, sorry, um, Joshua, and then goes into Judges. And so what happens then is we have time into in the Promised Land before they obviously lose access to the Promised Land. Um, I, you know, a very quick snapshot, what's going on? We, we followed um, Adam and Eve. We followed uh, Noah. We've seen Abraham. You've seen Isaac, Jacob. Joseph, now there were 12 sons of Jacob, and of course Judah is the, the rightful um, bloodline. Jesus comes from that line. Uh, he, he wasn't the firstborn, but we'll talk about that. Um, but it's Joseph that we sort of wanted to highlight here because he's the first uh, legitimate son, if you like, or the son from the original wife that, um, that, that Jacob desired, Rachel. And so Joseph is finally born. That's why he's the miracle child. Anyway, we, we talked about him, and that's how we learned that the Israelites got into Egypt when he became Prime Minister of Egypt, uh, and then they were there for 400 years, and then were in slavery. Now, then Moses comes at this time in the book of Exodus. And so we learn about Joshua, back end of Exodus and Numbers. And, and, and so uh, you'll, you'll see Joshua would have been a young boy um, learning about what it was like in Egypt. Would have been very young. Um, and he would have heard the stories, he would have known about these 10 plagues. And so what, you, you've learned about them in the last meditation, but what was, the, what was the point here? The Israelites were following the false gods of the Egyptians, and they were following these false gods and, and seeing the, the false gods of the Egyptians and how the ten plagues correspond with the false gods, you know, the frogs, the river, the, the cattle, and so on, obviously the sun. And so you don't worship creation. What's the lesson for us? We have to worship the Creator of creation, obviously. But unfortunately, as, as, as basic as that sounds, as obvious as it is, Israelites kept falling into the bad pattern of worshipping creation by building golden calves, by, by building false gods. And, 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 and you know, these are, these are false gods, small g. And what's going on? Do we have false gods today? Are we worshipping false gods? And, and so, so just think about that. And has the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, as that same God who, who now guided Moses is now guiding Joshua. And so I just wanted to, to give you that uh, overview. And if you understand what's going on, um, Joshua now continues. The, the baton is passed on from Moses to Joshua, and he continues uh, to lead the Israelites. But let's quickly look here in the, in the book of Numbers, what's going on in the 40 years in the wilderness. Remember, uh, they, they've crossed the Red Sea. They've crossed the, the partition of the sea, which was a miracle, another miracle. Uh, they get onto the other side, and now they're journeying. And 
unfortunately, um, you know, they, they had to they had to stay in the wilderness for 40 years. Um, and in that 40 years, what happened? What did Joshua witness as a young man alongside Moses, as his side right hand man, learning from 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 the teacher? He learned so many things about who God is, how, how Moses is, is communicating with God, and how Moses wanted to do God's will, not his will. So he was there at the Ten Commandments. He, he witnessed that. Joshua was there after the, the Ten Commandments. He saw the golden calf episode. He would have seen that. Joshua was there seeing those people swallowed up by the earth and, and, and following the false gods. Then he, he continued. I remember when they complained about no, nothing to drink. He was there when Moses hit the rock. And remember, it was that reason that Moses couldn't enter into the promised land because he didn't trust God. He hit the rock twice instead of once. And so, so he was forbidden to enter into the promised land. And that's where Joshua's uh, involvement is. But he was also there when the Israelites complained about no food. So what happened? Um, manna from heaven came down. Every single day, it, um, this bread would come down from heaven and they would eat of it. And Joshua witnessed that miracle. He was there later on when they complained, oh, I had so much bread, uh, you know, and now we want meat. So what happens? God, Moses begs God. Um, God then answers the prayer and then quail falls out of the sky and they've got meat. What's going on? Uh, th- does it look familiar in some of our spoiled lives? First world problems, you know, when, when we have everything at our disposal, when we think we've got it all, um, or, or we think we want something more, uh, I'll be happy when, so when I have water, okay, great. I'll be happy when I have food. It's bread, it's not what I wanted, I want more. I'll be happy when I've got meat. They're still not happy, by the way. They're, I'll be happy when I see God sh- show miracles. And he'd showed them plenty of miracles. What does it translate to us? I'll be happy when I get this car, I'll be happy when I get this phone, this computer, this job, this house, whatever it is. Uh, are our gods today become materialistic? Are they gods with a small g? Basically, your God is, is whatever takes your time, whatever is distracting you. Your God is whatever is dominating your, your thoughts. And so if you are buried in social media or buried in, 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 in looking at your smartphone, not being present to your family, you've got to be, just have a quick look at that. And that, that's going down the way the Egyptians went, where we are turning away from the one true God onto these false gods. And so let's not fall in that trap. Now Joshua understood this. He understood what the one true God was doing and he stayed faithful. He stayed faithful. And remember, it comes to the end of Moses' life and what it's interesting, Moses gives the final speech. Deuteronomy, you can read that. Within Deuteronomy, again, it talks about um, Joshua. He now gets, he, he gets in, he's in charge and he leads the Israelites into the Promised Land. So read the book of Numbers, highly recommend it. Just again, to to understand before we go there, uh, what was happening uh, about the Ark of the Covenant. So he was there when the Ark of the Covenant was built. And and so the tent, then within the Ark of the Covenant, we had this golden box. And in the golden box, you had the staff of Aaron, priesthood. You had the tablets of the Ten Commandments, Word of God. And then inside of that covenant, you had, of course, the manna from heaven. There was a bowl manna inside and they they that was a reminder of what god did the bread of life interesting uh and it's a beautiful comparison just on the ark of the covenant alone that if you fast forward um have you ever heard of litanies of mary being called the ark of the covenant you might be thinking how how does that marry up mary as the ark of the covenant in the rosary pilgrimage steve ray did a beautiful job explaining this um and and, and what you'll learn uh, and think about it what was inside of mary for nine months jesus christ and who does jesus represent who is jesus he's the word of god and there's your there's the the word of god meaning the the ten commandments in the in the old jesus is the true word of god then if you look at the staff of aaron priesthood jesus is the high priest he's the one that offers sacrifice himself on the cross then you notice the manner in in heaven the manner that's in in the ark of the covenant jesus is that manner. He's the bread of life. Whoever eats his flesh and drinks his blood will have eternal life, as it says in John 6, and is referring to the manna in heaven. So he refers to this um, over and over in John chapter 6. So read that cl- closely and you'll see and appreciate um, what the bread of life uh, discourse is about. 
Now Joshua knows all of this. He's seeing all of this. And so the power of the Ark of the Covenant, how do they cross over the River Jordan to get into the Promised Land? Here it comes, about to enter. And he says, we must carry the Ark. So the priests would carry the Ark. They went halfway through the Jordan. The moment their foot stepped onto the water, now remember they couldn't walk through. It was, it was fairly deep. The water partitioned. Here's the second time now uh, the Israelites see the partition of water. And so it's the Ark that does this. And it stops halfway through the River Jordan and allows the rest of the Israelites to cross into the Promised Land. So thanks to the Ark of the Covenant, um, they were able to cross over. And Joshua um, was the one to lead them in in the new land. Now, uh, very early on, you learn that there's a first battle and, and uh, the great um, battle at Jericho, the walls of Jericho. And now they've just seen what the Ark of the Covenant did crossing the, the River Jordan. How do you think they were going to enter into uh, Jericho and, and win this battle? Well, it wasn't going to be done... Um, by climbing the walls. It was going to be impossible. But what did they do? They went around the walls of Jericho seven times. On the seventh day, all right, so they went seven times for seven days. On the seventh day, they blew the trumpets and the walls of Jericho came tumbling down and then they, they won that battle and they were able to enter in. And, and, and a series of battles happened throughout the book and you, you read all that. Um, and so what's going on? There's these battles that took place um, and they conquered, they had the, the promised land, and they just followed what God was, was doing. Now, these conquering of, of armies and things like that, these armies are representing these false gods. They're worshipping the false gods. And so uh, the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is reminding Joshua to remind the Israelites to tell them what he is doing as their God. He'll guide them and he'll be with them. And if they don't listen to him, punishment will happen, and so justice will be served. And so then they fall into the trap of, of worship, pagan worship. So that's what happens. And it, and it sort of happens over and over. It's been happening till today. But Joshua, basically, you get to the uh, end of the story and, and there's a final speech. Now, now very quickly, if you read uh, his book, um, he, he breaks up the promised land into tribes. And that's how you have the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, and, and that's quite interesting, that whole episode there. You read about that. Um, and we fast forward what the 12 tribes, Jesus picks 12 apostles represented 12 tribes is quite beautiful but Joshua has a final speech and this is what it reminds the Israelites and I'm going to end on this he reminds them of all the times that the Israelites fell to the false gods and every time they do that God will punish them and he's reminding them do not go down the way of the false gods I want I want to um, really quote uh, the, the, the verse here and, and, and make sure you get this Joshua chapter 24 verse 15 and if you be willing to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your father served in the region before the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. How beautiful is that? May we echo Joshua's words. Joshua, who is the one who saves, and in Hebrew, Yeshua, 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 Yeshua is Jesus. Joshua's name, Jesus' name is Joshua. It just simply means he who saves, the Savior. Joshua saves them um, from slavery into freedom, into the promised land. And so may we turn to him and echo his words. Me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And may we put that on a doorpost in all our homes. And may that be on our foreheads. May we live it. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Thank you, Joshua, for reminding us of that. And may we all mirror him and echo his faithfulness to the one true God. Hope you enjoyed this meditation. We, we, we are only really halfway through salvation history. We've still got quite a bit to go. Enjoy the rest of the pilgrimage. A blessed Advent pilgrimage to all of you.